Hi, I'm Dr. Glenn. I am the founder and clinical director of the Carroll Institute, where we focus on reversing the symptoms of Alzheimer's and dementia. Today, we're going to talk about six ways that you can improve brain function, six tips that you can use. Now, before we go forward, if you would like to click the subscribe button below and the bell, you can follow us. And every time I put up a new video, you'll be notified. So we're going to talk about six ways to improve brain function to protect your brain from uh, cognitive decline and dementia. You know, Alzheimer's and dementia, along with memory loss, brain fog, depression, and other things, have become a monumental problem in the U.S. And actually, not only the U.S., but in, in the West in general. Right now, Alzheimer's ranks as the number three leading cause of death in the United States. And it's actually the number one leading cause of death in both the UK and France. The key to preventing these problems and maintaining a healthy and vibrant brain revolves around intelligent preventive strategies. So we're going to talk about six natural tips that you can opt use to optimize your brain and to keep it healthy. The first thing we want to do is to make sure that you are eating plenty of fat. Now, fat has gotten a bad reputation over the last 40, 45 years or so. Uh, it's often been demonized in an unfair light. This goes back to some faulty research that came out of the Soviet Union in the early 1950s. And the idea that fat made you fat, actually fat does not make you fat. Carbohydrates make you fat. Eating the right kind of fat is very important. We want to avoid hydrogenated fats, and those are such things like vegetable oil, soy oil, uh, corn oils, canola oil. You do not want to be cooking with vegetable type oils or corn oil. Uh, and this is the type of oil that is found in most processed foods. What we want to see you doing is eating plenty of good omega-3 fats, especially animal-based fats like cold water fish, grass-fed beef, and so forth. Plant sources of omega-3 like flax and chia, they have to be biologically converted by the body. So they're not as good as animal-based fats. Some people do have trouble converting them as well. Omega-3 fats have been shown to help fight inflammation. Excessive omega-6 fats, now those are the bad ones, they contribute to an inflammatory process. Remember that your vitamins A, D, E, and K are actually forms of fat. So when you eat a low-fat diet, there is a significant probability that you will develop vitamin deficiencies in your fat-based vitamins. We want to avoid excessive amounts of carbohydrates, especially in processed carbohydrates. You know, what we now call the standard American diet is about 60%, if not more, carbohydrate. And it has been this way since the late 1970s. Excessive carbohydrates are stored as body fat, you know, around the middle, that spare tire. That's actually carbohydrate storage. And this can lead to type 2 diabetes. Overconsumption of carbohydrates can also lead to the destruction of hormones, causing them to lose their functions, things such as uh, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. Excessive carbohydrates also contribute to yeast and fungus overgrowth. And I very often see yeast and fungal overgrowth in my patients. We want to maintain healthy blood sugar levels. Many of you may know that Alzheimer's is now being called type 3 diabetes. As a matter of fact, blood sugar regulation along with inflammation are the two main types of uh, conditions that drive cognitive decline. We want to monitor your blood sugar levels and you can use this, eat, do this easily by using a glucose meter. Uh, I use one myself. It's made by a company called Keto Mojo. You can buy it on Amazon. We want to see your hemoglobin. That's what HG means. Hemoglobin A1C. That needs to be between 5 and 5.5. Hemoglobin A1C is a much better measure for your blood sugar than your glucose level because it tells you what the three month average of your blood sugar is. We'd like to see a fasting glucose between 70 and 90. 
and we'd like to see fasting insulin levels at five or even less than five. Now I've mentioned leptin here because I wanted to just say a brief word about it. Leptin is a chemical that tells your brain that you are satiated. When you eat excessive amounts of carbohydrates, it inhibits your leptin response. When leptin doesn't respond properly and tell your brain that you are satiated, you will have a tendency to eat until you are full. So that there, that is a different thing. When you eat more fat and protein, leptin tells your brain that you are satiated before you have overeaten. Nutrient levels, magnesium, zinc, chromium, vitamin D, B, all of your B vitamins actually, they are all impaired by dysregulation of blood sugar levels. We want to see you exercising. Now this is not the typical exercising that you think of in terms of heart, cardio exercising. We want to see you building some muscle mass, the more muscle mass you have, the less the probability is of diabetes. Muscle mass equals better blood sugar control. Movement, just going for a walk, promotes cerebral spinal fluid, CSF, circulation around the brain and actually throughout the entire body. Your CSF delivers nutrients to your brain and it carries away the waste from the uh, metabolic uh, activity in the brain. Walking is absolutely actually one of the best ways to promote CSF movement. Movement leads to better lymphatic drainage, blood flow, and oxygenation of your brain tissue and actually all of your tissue. There's also something called uh, HIT or high intensity interval training. You can look that up if you want. You can Google it. Uh, it's where you do sort of spurt high intensity and it is great for making a chemical called BDNF, that is brain derived neurotrophic factor. And that is a powerful chemical that is involved in repairing and growing new brain tissue. We want to avoid brain wrecking medications and drugs. The number one amongst these is statins and you just you can't believe how many people are taking statin drugs. It all goes back to the idea that cholesterol causes heart disease. Cholesterol does not cause heart disease. Inflammation causes heart disease. Cholesterol is needed to form brain synapses. Now actually what a lot of people don't realize is that your brain is about 30 percent or more cholesterol. Your liver makes more cholesterol than you can eat. Statins block cholesterol production which leads to brain degeneration. Cholesterol levels below 150, and a matter of fact, a couple of years ago in the uh, British medical journal called The Lancet, it was shown that cholesterol levels even below 180 actually can increase Alzheimer's and dementia, depression, and suicidal tendencies. It is not a good idea to lower your cholesterol below 180. Metformin, you know, we see a lot of metformin use in uh, diabetics. It inhibits vitamin B12 uh, synthesis. B12 is necessary to produce the myelin, which is the coating around your nerves. It also inhibits folate, and so it keeps you from being able to form neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine. Taking metformin promotes depression and loss of motivation. CoQ10, that is a deficiency that is linked to metformin and that leads to cognitive decline. Blood pressure medications, they inhibit CoQ10 production and its uptake. If you have a blood pressure problem, you need to find out why and not just take drugs. Blood pressure medications also cause magnesium level, vitamin B loss and potassium and other electrolyte levels to go too low. Antacids are, they inhibit calcium, magnesium, zinc, and vitamin B12 absorption. They also keep you from breaking your food down properly. Antidepressants such as serotonin uh, reuptake inhibitors, they prevent serotonin levels from breaking down and quickly recirculating and they actually lead to a flatness of mood rather than an improvement of mood. Now, the last thing we want to go over is don't eat grains. And the thing is, is for the last 45 to 50 years, we've really been eating an awful lot of grains because we were told that they were good for our heart. Grains are not good for your heart. Grains are carbohydrates. Carbohydrates generate 
inflammation in the body. Gluten causes formation uh, of gluten and neural antibodies and can lead and to and promote autoimmune diseases. Gluten can cause leaky gut, which in turn leads to leaky brain. And I'm going to make a video about how leaky gut and leaky brain are interlinked and how they produce cognitive decline and Alzheimer's. Grains are contaminated often with molds and mycotoxins, which is why when wheat crops are harvested, they are sprayed with Roundup or glyphosate in order to dry them out to uh, inhibit mold formation. This can create chronic sinusitis, infections, they alter cortisol levels, and they can disrupt adrenal and thyroid function. Grains can also alter your microbiome. That's the bacterial colony that lives in your gut and is very, very important. Grains are also high in omega-6 fatty acids. Those are the fatty acids that in most people are way too high, especially in comparison with the good omega-3 three fatty acids. Grains before it is processed can also grow molds and we mentioned that just a moment ago. These six tips can help to prevent brain deterioration and cognitive decline. If you liked this video take a moment and click the subscribe button below and the bell icon that way you can follow us on YouTube and you'll also receive notification when I post new videos. And please keep a watch out for my upcoming series on how a ketogenic diet can help to reverse the symptoms of Alzheimer's and dementia. This is Dr. Glenn and I hope you have a wonderful day.